Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is July 1st, 2022. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Longtime subscribers know that I consider boxing to be a craft. But it's also a commercial transaction. Paying fans want the new and exciting. There is an expiration date on your teen heartthrob status. Everybody loves a winner. If you start losing, you're going to lose half of your entourage and almost everyone, whether that's Joe Lewis or Lennox Lewis, Evander Holifield, Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, either Klitschko, Wilder, Joshua, eventually loses. Right? The folks who don't have official losses have fights that people debate, don't they? The first John McDermott Tyson Fury fight. The Castillo Mayweather first fight. The Roland Lestarza Rocky Marciano first fight. Just understand that you can be a great fighter, you can be an all time great and have losses on your record, right? Nobody, in my opinion, is special, is completely immune from being severely tested. Now, I believe Ryan Garcia, who is unbeaten today and young, saw this differently. He thought he was part of a crusade with Canelo and his trainer, superstar trainer, Eddie Reynoso. He thought they were going to take over the world together. That it was a team effort. Well, Eddie spent more time with pound-for-pound pound multi-divisional champion and future Hall of Famer Canelo. Both unbeaten Ryan Garcia and unbeaten heavyweight Frank Sanchez left. And now it is a brave new world for Ryan Garcia. Now, I believe Ryan Garcia is special. He reminds me of a great fighter, Alexis Arguello. He has great power. His new trainer, Joe Goosen, who can't believe his good luck. It's Christmas in summertime for Joe Goosen, right? He got both unbeaten Ryan Garcia and he got unbeaten Frank Sanchez. Most trainers will go their entire careers without getting unbeaten fighters of this caliber in the middle of their careers. Right? So understand, Ryan Garcia has a lot going for him. But he is tall, and he's unorthodox. Right? Let's talk about how he's unorthodox, folks. He stands way too upright, doesn't he? He can't keep guys from crashing the pocket. He's not Thomas Hearns. He does not have a controlling jab. Right? This isn't Larry Holmes. This isn't the guy where the fight does not start until you get past his jab. Garcia just doesn't have the jab at this age. He ends up in shootouts. He relies on a lean backward. He does have a great center of gravity. I'll give him that. He relies on a lean backward for defense. His chin is an open question. Let's remember he hits the canvas against Luke Campbell. Now, I know he's popular. I called him special. He's special in that way where a fighter is talented before they get severely tested in the meat of their careers. He's just entering that meaty part of his career, and he's doing it against exactly, in my opinion, the wrong kind of opponent. 
Javier Fortuna is 33. I understand down at this weight, 33 is practically a retirement home. It's a senior citizen center. He's a vet. He has been in multiple, let me repeat that, multiple title fights. In fact, he himself was the champion at 130 pounds in 2015. He has fought and beaten elite competition throughout his career. For example, he beat Abner Cotto. He beat Sharif Bogare. Folks, these are very talented individuals. This is the part of the sport where you have some talented guys who don't quite break through. These guys in their prime would be a major test for Ryan Garcia. Understand at the time that Fortuna fought these guys, these guys were very highly regarded. Fortuna also fought in a lightweight title fight <clears throat> against a very tall Robert Easter and went the distance and lost by split decision. Easter was harder to get inside on than Ryan Garcia. Now understand, <clears throat> Fortuna is so experienced that he himself has gotten off the canvas to win fights. Not only that, he's even had a guy, I believe it was Jason Sosa, get off the canvas to beat him in a fight. So this is the vet who has been down many roads, has seen a lot, right? Should not be confused with a guy in his early 20s who had a great amateur career, but who's just now meeting the meaty part of his professional career. Javier Fortuna has been there, has done that. Won a belt, has faced other guys who had belts. So, <clears throat> the bet I like and understand where you make profits is in the space between what the public thinks is going on and what's really going on. The bet I like is Javier Fortuna at a plus 600. Folks, those are the odds as of this morning, July the 1st. I like Javier Fortuna at a plus 600. That's six to one to win the fight. Hedged with Garcia by stoppage. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If the heavily favored teen heartthrob Garcia wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. Understand Fortuna has power. 26 knockouts in 41 fights. That computes to a roughly 60% KO ratio. He's complicated. Folks, he's a southpaw. You heard me say that Ryan Garcia can't keep people outside. Ryan Garcia is 5'10". Fortuna is 5'6 half. Let me point out, too, that Fortuna can fight low. He can bend his knees. He's also content hitting you in the body. He doesn't have to deal with Ryan Garcia's lean. He's not addicted to hitting you in the head, even though he's very effective doing so. Right? If Ryan Garcia does not cover up the right side of his body, Javier Fortuna is going to go to work. And I'm guessing Garcia is going to want to throw his big right hand. So there are going to be times where countering opportunities to the right side of his body are going to line up perfectly with Javier Fortuna's southpaw stance. Let me point out, too, that Javier Fortuna has a very heavy left hook, very heavy, that he can convert into a left uppercut. He's a volume guy. 
In other words, he'll come in with a two-handed attack. He'll keep you busy. He's willing to trade. This is not the guy who's in against the power puncher who's going to try to find a nice place to hide in the ring. No, this is the guy who starts the fight, thinking that there are two hunters in the ring, and he's one of them. I think this is a complicated, difficult matchup for Ryan Garcia. I think if the public wasn't blinded by Garcia's popularity, I think people would realize that this is a highly competitive fight. Right, Garcia is special. The point is that no one is so special that they don't get tested. Understand, too, Fortuna is catching Garcia at the right time, right? Garcia is just getting his feet wet with Joe Goosen. It's a myth that someone can just walk into a superstar trainer's empire and immediately learn everything that superstar trainer has to teach and can then just go out there in their next fight or the fight after their next fight and have an edge. Right? I believe these boxer-trainer relationships, when they're done right, take time. Especially when you're unbeaten. Especially when you have a formula and you've been winning and you haven't had the reason to self-investigate, to look inward, to ask yourself about the flaws in your game, to even acknowledge the flaws in your game. So this is going to be a very fast-paced fight, right? Garcia is going to be forced to drive 70 miles an hour, right? Everyone is impressed with his power. The one group that won't be impressed with his power are veteran fighters who've already been in the ring with the Abner Kodos, right? It's veteran fighters who themselves have power and who themselves know that that power wasn't enough to save them in some fights, right? Let me make another point too, and I understand in the comment section, as always happens, when you have a young unbeaten guy with a high KO percentage, there's always that group that falls for the hype that believes the betting spread, that the casino routinely exploits, right? Everyone is supposed to be a paradigm shift. Think Mike Tyson before the Buster Douglas fight, right? Every one of these new guys is someone new who's just going to run through boxing and who's going to justify lines like this. But quite frankly, it's absurd to even think about the possibility that these two guys could fight seven times and that Ryan Garcia would win six of the seven. <laughs> Folks, that's the way Vegas has priced this fight. They're going after the money of casual fans. What I want people to do is to look in my favorites folder here on YouTube. You're going to see the highlights of Javier Fortuna's career. I want you to look in the eyes of the guys who hit the canvas against him. I want you to look at his left hook. I know it's hidden. He's kind of like Andy Garcia, right? Excuse me, Andy Ruiz. It's hidden in other volume. In other words, you'll see Fortuna come in and he's throwing a right hand and, you know, you see him do a lot of stuff. Then you'll notice the one left hook that lands flush that completely stops an otherwise alert opponent, right? A guy with that level of talent, a guy with this level of experience should never be 
and I mean this, should never be a 6-1 to one underdog. Right? Understand, if he were fighting Devin Haney at 135, if he were fighting Gervonta Davis at 135, he should not be a 6-1 to one underdog. Folks, the sport is simply too competitive. Right? Most of the guys who you think are unbeatable can be beaten by certain styles on certain nights. Right? Ryan Garcia is a promising fighter. Maybe he becomes Alexis Arguello. Understand it's a long road. Canelo recently had some very hard comments to say about Ryan Garcia. He called Garcia a kid. He talked about how Garcia is just starting out, really hasn't accomplished a lot in the sport. Now, I know that's going to shock some people, but understand Canelo's perspective is the perspective of a guy who won the title at 154, 160, 168, 175, right? Canelo has faced many guys, Danny Jacobs, uh, Callum Smith, who have done more in the sport than Ryan Garcia, right? Fight fans should not confuse Ryan Garcia with a Canelo, right? The fact that the casino is pricing Ryan Garcia that way against a guy who himself owned the title at 130 and who already fought for the lightweight title at 135, shows you how ridiculous the world is. So, I'll be the casino's huckleberry, right? Who's going to bet against Ryan Garcia? I will. Um, they've hit my number, and trust me, my number was a lot lower than a plus 600. If you're going to give me a plus 600 on Javier Fortuna, when I look out the window, I'm expecting to see Santa and some reindeer. It's Christmas in July. Of course, I'm going to hedge the play with Garcia by KO. But understand, he's going to be pushed. Robert Easter has a better jab, can keep guys away from his body better than Ryan Garcia. Understand, Easter escapes Javier Fortuna with a split decision win. Garcia is going to be pushed. Understand, young guys don't know what they don't know. I am shocked, shocked that the people around Garcia have put him in against this level of opponent so cavalierly, right? Javier Fortuna is the kind of guy you fight when you have a title, right? Or when he has a title, right? You don't fight him on the way there. Right? This is a tough matchup, I've long said. You need to look out for KG Vets. When the guy on the other side of the ring has already been in wars. Right, folks, you need to know that before you're in a battle. Understand, too, five, six and a half, and he can bend his knees. Garcia might find himself reaching for Fortuna. Right? Southpaw might throw Garcia off. Garcia, and I understand, he went the distance in his last fight. In other words, Garcia doesn't always get KOs, folks. As blessed a puncher as he is. Right? Garcia here, though, is going to be in against a guy who's going to be looking for a stoppage. The fight's in L.A. where Garcia is immensely pop popular. Fortuna has to think to himself, I need for my two hands, my left and my right, to be the judges in this fight. I can't trust the three people sitting around the ring. So he's going to go after Garcia, and he has the 60% KO percentage to have him think that he can get it done. I'm taking the underdog. I'm hedging this with Garcia by stoppage, right? If Garcia gets the stoppage, okay, good for me. 
you know. But, again, understand the risk involved. If Garcia cruises to a decision in Southern California, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say, too, Alexis Arguello 